New York City. In April, city officials announced they were indefinitely extending a mask mandate for all public pre-K programs. The city's two, three, and four-year-olds will have to mask up until a vaccine is approved for kids. New York joins about a dozen public school systems closing out the academic year, still making students wear masks. And the city's top health official trotted out the standard justification. As a father of a two and a half year old, I want to keep him safe, especially because he's not eligible for a vaccine. Masking kids to keep them safe. We're still doing this after all we've learned. There's something worse than just bad science going on here. Children are not at risk. This is a disease of the elderly and very infirm and the obese. Right. What is so amazing is we knew everything that was to be known about COVID in March 2020 with the publication of the Italian public health results. That the average age of people dying of COVID was 80, three comorbidities, nothing changed. That has remained the profile. The difference in death risk between people 75 and older, 80 and older versus people younger is like a thousand to one. Slightly over a thousand American children have died from COVID. Each of these deaths is a world melting tragedy for the families, but stretched over two years, that total makes COVID's death risk microscopically small, smaller than even regular seasonal flu. So what's driving this masking fanaticism? It can't be a clear-eyed assessment of the risks. I show up at our school and I can see double vaccinated and boosted 14-year-old uh, is still now has just spent like, you know, two of their 14 years on this earth in this ridiculous state. If you go down to our lower school, you'll see toddlers who are wearing some weird MacGyvered version of an N95, and it feels demonic. COVID panic has served for some people in our community as a replacement for some higher meaning, like a big amorphous threat that you can rally around. There's an enemy, and those are the people of Florida, the anti-vaxxers, the anti-maskers, the Republicans. So there's like people that you can hate. This is something to live and die for. Sense of meaning, some kind of transcendental thing. And this zealotry has been encouraged by the power players of public health. The Center for Disease Control spent two full years recommending masks for school kids starting at two years old. This is federal sanction of mask fanaticism. And its reasoning always felt like religion. Late last year, the CDC released a study supposedly showing that mask mandates stopped infection in a set of Arizona public schools. The study purported to show that schools without mask mandates had three and a half times more outbreaks than schools with mask mandates. Rochelle Walensky, who's the director of the CDC, repeatedly talked about this study. Three and a half times more likely to have outbreaks. We're three and a half times, three and a half times, three and a half times. We're three and a half times likelier to have a COVID-19 outbreak than schools that require masks. Except I started looking at the calendars for a number of the school districts in the study, and I saw something strange. The study says it began on July 15th, when a large percentage of the schools didn't even open until August. Schools that are open for more days will have more opportunity for infection, regardless of their masking policies. The schools without mask mandates 
were studied for a longer period of time. They were open longer than the schools with mask mandates. There was an invisible thumb on the scale. And when I emailed with the CDC about this, and I'm finding all these problems, what do you have to say about that? And they said, there are no errors. That phrase just perfectly encapsulates how science has been redefined. Science is now self-righteous proclamation from on high. The experts voice the new truth, flash their credentials, and then condescend critics into silence. This new science was on full display last fall during a House committee hearing on masking in schools. Cloth masks offer at best a marginal benefit. And that is the mask that most children are wearing. And related what you're about to witness is an act of intellectual weakness. Mr. Zwag, I have a variety of questions, so if you could give me a yes or no answer, I'd really appreciate it. Do you have an educational background in epidemiology? I do not. Do you have an educational background in pediatric medicine? I do not. Do you have an educational background in healthcare? I do not. I am a journalist. Thank I think you're yes, aware of yes, what I, my Yes, I'm aware of that. Thank is. you. Dr. Ja, I believe you do have a medical degree and a master's degree in public health, both from an esteemed university. Uh, so with all due respect to Mr. Zweig, I think there's a lot of things that he said that, that isn't consistent with the data. Let me be very and now Dr. Ja will use his credentials to camouflage a lie. There really aren't very many experts out there who think that uh, kids wearing masks is not a helpful thing. What I wanted to say was, are you familiar with Europe? To completely dismiss what is happening with tens of millions of children in many other countries in the Western world. I think the US is alone in asking for very young children to be wearing masks. We are an outlier. This pandemic has revealed a catastrophic arrogance in our public health establishment. It's been this lumbering colossus, irresponsibly slinging its great powers, sowing chaos in its wake. So it responds to a novel virus by blindly shutting down the economy, incinerating millions of jobs. It shutters schools, dragging millions of parents out of the workforce to take care of their kids at home. It locks people in their homes, exacerbating a loneliness epidemic and dramatically driving up drug overdoses. The Colossus never seems to notice the collateral damage. It's never humbled. And then it mandated masks for kids for years, choking them off from the sights and sounds of the world. And in its catastrophic arrogance, it assures us that there's no evidence masks can hurt kids. Of course there are no studies on the harms of masks because someone would have thought you were insane if you were going to try to study forcing children to wear masks for a year. No one would have approved this if you were to say, we just want to see if masks really, if there's any harms for them in case there's a pandemic that comes up. So, of course, we don't have any evidence on this. No one would have ever studied this. And asking for specific proven harms from masks misses something deeper. We've been squeezing the freedom out of childhood for decades, vastly shrinking what children are allowed to do, collapsing their world into the safety of a screen. This parenting philosophy is dead wrong about the nature of the developing brain, which grows fragile without regular friction with the world. And now our children are suffering skyrocketing rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide. And definitely masking children is an especially grotesque version of this neurotic micromanagement of childhood. And it's making what was already an emergency even worse. I've seen more students 
need to use our uh, counseling services than, than ever before. So I've, I've seen lines outside the, the counseling office uh, to the point at which this was causing a crisis within our counseling department. The trend lines all got much worse during the pandemic. Today, young Americans are 10 times more likely to die from suicide than COVID. So when you hear New York City's public health commissioner say this. As a father of a two and a half year old, I want to keep him safe. No, that's not just fiction. It's a toxic fiction, a fiction accelerating the collapse of childhood.